Hello everyone, I'm Sandeep and welcome back to another edition of Xiaomi Photography Masterclass. In our last episode, we dived into the fascinating world of Aperture, unveiling its secrets, exploring its impact on image creation, as well as exposure, depth of field, and even dissecting the stepless variable aperture feature that you found on the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. If you missed it, don't worry, as you can catch up on it across all our social media channels, including Xiaomi India's YouTube channel and our previous episodes as well. Today, we're diving into a crucial aspect of photography that plays an important role in image creation, which is ISO. Now, whether you're using the impressive Xiaomi 14 or pushing the boundaries with the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, understanding ISO will take your photography to the next level. So join us as we explore the ins and outs of ISO, uncovering its nuances and discovering how to harness its power to elevate your photography to new heights. From understanding the fundamentals to unlocking its creative potential, we've got you covered every step of the way. Get ready to immerse yourself in an enriching learning experience with insights, tips, and hands-on techniques. So grab your Xiaomi device and unleash your creativity as we embark on this captivating adventure together. Welcome to the Xiaomi Photography Masterclass, where every shot tells a story and every episode brings us closer to photographic excellence. So what exactly is ISO? Well, it stands for International Standards Organization in conventional photography. The ISO number is a measure of the sensitivity of light in photographic film. And this has been carried over to the digital photography era and is a way of expressing the light sensitivity of the sensor. In simple words, ISO controls the sensitivity of the camera sensor to light. So how do we understand ISO values? Well, it's very simple. The lower the ISO number, the less sensitive the film or sensor is to light, while a higher ISO number indicates greater sensitivity. So think of ISO like the sensitivity knob on your camera. When you set it to a low ISO, say around 50 to around 400, it's like your camera is less sensitive to light. This is perfect for sunny days or when you have excess light and you need those crisp and clean shots without too much fuzziness. But when the light starts to dip or you're indoors, you might want to crank that up to a moderate range, say 400 to 800 ISO, and this is like giving a caffeine boost to your camera. It becomes a little more sensitive to light, but still keeps the image quality in check. However, sometimes when you're in very challenging lighting conditions, like at night or a very dimly lit room, you need to capture fast moving objects without blur, for instance. That's where high ISO comes into play, where you might need to bump up the ISO to 800 or 1600 or even more. But of course, there's a trade-off. As you increase the ISO, you're amplifying the signal from the sensor, which introduces digital noise. Think of it as adjusting the volume on a speaker. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive your camera becomes to light. Check out these two images of the majestic Mount Taranki. On the left side, you see a daylight shot of Taranki, which has been shot at an ISO of just 100. Whereas the other image shows the mountain with vastness of the Milky Way in the background. And in this instance, this was shot at a higher ISO of 3200 during night. This is how two separate ISO values give different visual treatment, even though the subject is the same and you see it in front of you. The general rule of thumb is to keep it as low as possible for getting better image quality without the trade-off of noise. Hence, in bright daylight, try and stick to a lower ISO setting of 100 or 200 to achieve crisp, noise-free images. But there are few circumstances where you don't want to utilize higher ISO, such as when you get noise or grain in the picture. That's the place where the art of balancing exposure and balancing ISO comes into play. So as you see, photography is basically light and shadow play. Achieving that perfect exposure is like finding the sweet spot in a recipe. It requires just the right balance of ingredients. And in this case, our ingredients are aperture, shutter speed, as well as ISO. And these three together is what we call the exposure triangle. Let's break down the trick of balancing all three key elements in bright and low light conditions. Whether you're out on a sunny day ready to capture the beauty around you, what do you do to prevent overexposure? Well, it's all about making adjustments to our exposure triangle. In these scenarios where in bright outdoor environments, the first step is to speed up the shutter speed to freeze the action and also using high shutter speed such as 1 by 3200 of a second to 1 by 2000 of a second, this helps reduce overexposure. Then you can lower the ISO to keep the images crisp and clear, and finally compensate the exposure 
using aperture and there you go. You've got a well exposed shot even under bright sunlight. But what if the sun starts to go down and the light starts to fade? So well, we will explore techniques to master the exposure triangle in Lodi photography. As the day turns to dusk or we find ourselves in a dimly lit environment, we need to adapt our exposure triangle once again. This time we open up the aperture, allowing more light to hit the sensor by using a lower f-stop value like we mentioned in the previous episode. And to maintain this image quality without introducing too much noise, we bump up the ISO just enough to brighten the scene without sacrificing clarity. Next, we compensate the exposure by using the shutter. With these adjustments, we can capture the essence of the moment even in the darkest of settings. And there you have it folks, the art of balancing exposure triangle. Whether you're in basking sunlight or embracing shadows, understanding how these three elements, namely aperture, shutter speed and ISO work together is key to achieving these stunning photographs. Beyond simply adjusting exposure, ISO also opens the door to creativity in terms of expression of photography. Experimenting with higher ISO settings can introduce artistic effects like grain, which can also be intentional noise, adding character and mood to your images. Take a look at these photos for instance. These photos taken with varying ISO settings showcasing uniqueness of the atmosphere each setting creates. In order to capture star trails and aurora lights at night, we use the higher ISO of 3200 and a slower shutter speed, which ensures there's more light coming in combined with a wide aperture to gather more light. If you take a closer look at these images, you'll notice a slight grainy texture that actually enhances the visual appeal, giving them an artistic yet textured look. Take a look at this image of a glass window in a church, which is complemented by the elegant presence of a chandelier. This visually captivating scene was photographed under low lighting conditions and using a higher ISO of 4000, which helped achieve a well-lit image with intricate detail. Of course, the natural green introduced by the higher ISO enhances the photograph, imparting a film-like aesthetic that highlights intricate details and vibrant colors in the scene. So using ISO depends on the creative aspect as well. Whether you're aiming for a vintage film-like appeal or adding drama to your shots, don't be afraid to push the boundaries of ISO if you're looking for that creative impact. Now, you might have wondered why are ISO values often higher in automatic mode on smartphones during low light scenarios. Well, it's pretty interesting to see how camera manages to handle these scenarios, don't you think? So let me break down how your smartphone's camera works in auto mode when you're trying to snap a photo in less than ideal conditions. When the camera detects that the scene is too dark, it adjusts the exposure, of course, to let in more light. And in order to achieve this, the smartphone increases the ISO value, which makes the sensor more sensitive to light. This helps capture more details in dark environment and eventually results in a brighter and well-lit image. But there's a catch. Like I mentioned earlier, cranking up the ISO does tend to introduce some noise or graininess into the photo, and this can make the image look less sharp and clear. In most smartphones, when you raise the ISO to capture images in low light environments, you usually end up dealing with noise and grain in the photos. However, if you have a smartphone such as the Xiaomi 14 or 14 Ultra, you will be sure that the grain does not come until you go much higher in terms of the ISO range thanks to the tremendous capabilities that the smartphone has by default. Thanks to Xiaomi X Leica partnership, Leica's expertise in lens technology and our image processing, which plays a key role in shaping Xiaomi's vision to create cameras that excel even in low lighting conditions, our advanced image processing makes sure that your images are free from those imperfections and gives you clearer and cleaner images even when using higher ISO settings. Not just noise reduction, this collaboration also focuses on improving dynamic range of your photos. That means capturing a wider array of tones from the brightest of highlights to the deepest and darkest of shadows all in one single shot. This way you won't lose out any of the important details and your photos will look more balanced and true to life. Here are also some practical tips for ISO management and some rules of thumb. Number one, use the lowest ISO possible for giving lighting conditions to maintain image clarity. Number two, employ a tripod or a stabilizing technique to compensate for slower shutter and the resulting motion that may come and give rise to shakes on your camera. Number three, balance aperture and shutter speed. 
adjust ISO along with aperture and shutter speed to achieve the desired exposure while minimizing noise and maximizing image quality. And there you have it folks, a comprehensive guide to mastering ISO photography, especially with your Xiaomi 14 and 14 Ultra. Remember, ISO is not just a technical setting, this is a tool for unleashing your creativity and capturing moments in stunning detail, no matter what your lighting conditions are. So grab your Xiaomi smartphone, experiment with ISO, and let your creativity shine. Until next time, happy shooting. So that's it for this particular video regarding ISO. Please go ahead and try this out for yourselves to experience the benefit of using the exposure triangle with your Xiaomi smartphone or just about any smartphone. Once you try it out, please do post it on social media, tag our Xiaomi India handles as well as use the hashtags Xiaomi X Leica, hashtag Xiaomi Photography Masterclass and hashtag Xiaomi Behind the Lens. See you again very soon in the next episode where we dive into the details of yet another aspect of photography. Xiaomi.